Almost every book, newspaper, or thesis written by the scholars of Mohammedan Islam rebuke, defame, and insult the West, especially for their imperialism and occupation of Arab and Mohammedan lands, but at the same time glorify their own conquests and find nothing hypocritical with such logic. What about their conquests? You are absolutely right in labeling their behavior as hypocritical. I must point out to our listeners the following irrefutable facts. It was because of Western imperialism that Arab and Mohammedan lands were introduced to education, sanitation, electricity, running water, democracy, roads, trains, cars, planes, medicine, inoculation, etc., etc. It was also because of Western imperialism that the Arabs were liberated from the yoke of the Muhammad al-Muslim Ottoman Empire and 22 Arab countries that did not exist before were created. It was due to Western imperialism that these peoples rediscovered their past history due exclusively to the archaeological discoveries and research financed and conducted entirely by the West. Now let me compare these positive achievements of the West with what the Muhammad and Muslims contributed towards their conquered peoples and lands. Let us first set the record straight. The Arab conquest during and after the death of Muhammad were not only motivated by the desire to spread Islam, but mainly to acquire territory and wealth. In fact, the spread of Islam was just a byproduct of the conquests. As was true throughout human history, enormous wealth brought with it enormous power. Wealth and power are synonymous, but enormous power also engendered enormous corruption. The Arabs were just as greedy and just as weak as anyone else when faced between the choice of acquiring wealth or staying as good, observant, poor Muslims in the Arabian desert. The Arabs conquered and subjugated other peoples and lands and became just another imperialist power. The same modern Arabs and Muhammadans who condemn European and American imperialism have very conveniently forgotten their own conquests. Unlike all other imperial powers that have ceased to exist, Arab imperialism continues to this day, 1400 years later, in control and in subjugation of peoples and lands that never belong to them except through conquest and enslavement. The speed with which the Arabs were able to conquer was astounding, and the main reason, especially in what we call today Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Israel and Egypt, was because most of these peoples welcomed them as would-be deliverers from the intolerance and subjugation of the Byzantine Christian Empire. Very few of the Arab victories would have been possible had the populace been hostile to them. It is the fact that the Arabs had absolutely no instruments of siege, nor were they adept at such warfare at the very beginning of their conquests. Muhammad started the Arabs on the path of imperialism from the time of the Hijra in 622 CE, with the following allegedly revealed verses. al Tauba 9.5 But when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans whenever you find them, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. 9.29 Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, Islam, even if they are of the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya, poll tax, with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. Ali Imran 3.19 The religion before Allah is Islam, submission to his will. 3.85 If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah, never will it be accepted of him. Muhammad started his jihad, plunder and slaughter sanctified by Allah, first against his own tribe of the Quraysh, then followed with the forced conversion or destruction of other tribes, the Arabians, then the Arabian Jews, and the Christians. Based upon the above alleged divine revelations, the forcibly converted, illiterate, and uncivilized Arab Bedouins, led by the caliphs who succeeded Muhammad, conducted wars of extermination and or subjugation against all of humanity from Iraq and Syria to Iran, from India to China, from Egypt to the Atlantic, and from Cyprus to Italy, Spain, and France. In about 100 years, the Arabs and their forced converts achieved an empire greater in size than that of Rome's of 1,000 years. This Arab empire caused the destruction, 
plunder of wealth and enslavement not only of millions of human beings, but also of temples, religions, civilizations, traditions, cultures, art and languages of the subjugated peoples and nations. The so-called Islamic arts were and are only copies of those of the Byzantine, Sassanid and Indian civilizations. The so-called Islamic civilization is a first-class misnomer because in reality it should be called the Mawali civilization since the Arabs had no civilization to contribute to the enslaved peoples. On the contrary, it was the subjugated civilizations that gave the Arabs the foundations upon which to continue with fits and starts and against all the Islamic Sharia laws and Arab traditions on the path that led them to greater enlightenment. Converse to all the lies and propaganda of the Arabs, past and present, most of the scientists and luminaries of Islam were actually from among the Mawali, the converted subjugated peoples of Islam, such as the Persians, Syrians, Jews, Christians, Hindus, etc., as the Islamic records themselves assert. Without a shadow of a doubt, Arab imperialism has been the most enduring, the most destructive, and the least useful in the history of the world. This assertion is based entirely on the following indisputable facts. One. There was no Arab civilization in the area and era of Muhammad. His followers were mostly illiterate and very simple and superstitious nomadic and semi-nomadic people. Two, the Arabs conquered several of the most ancient and established civilizations in the world, plundered them, massacred many and enslaved and subjugated the remainder. This applies particularly to the Byzantine Empire, which fell more due to Christian infighting than to Arab military prowess. Arab and Islamic imperialism was so total that they forced the conquered peoples to convert to Muhammadan Islam to lose their religious and cultural identities as well as their language. The Arabs could not and did not contribute anything to them, since they themselves were far inferior culturally, theologically and intellectually. Arab imperialism, unlike that of the Persians, Greek, Romans and the recent so-called Western imperialism, is almost totally parasitic. Three. Nearly 95% of all so-called Muslim scientists were from among the Mawalis, converts from among the conquered peoples, and not pure Arabs. All of them excelled not because of Muhammad and Islam, but in spite of it, and invariably during periods of history when the conditions were of toleration that allowed Christians, Jews, and others to contribute and cross-fertilize knowledge. It is a given that a human intellect can only thrive under conditions of freedom of thought and the ability to exchange ideas and communication. It can never excel under conditions of theocratic terror, as invariably exists under the Sharia law of Muhammadan Islam. For most of the so-called Islamic science was only built upon the foundations of Greek, Roman, Hebrew, Byzantine, Persian and Indian knowledge, and had it not been for the translations of these ideas and thoughts by Christians and Jews of the Arabian Empire, Islamic science would not have existed. In fact, nothing of value intellectual, artistic, spiritual or literary can ever sprout in the darkness cast by fundamentalist Muhammadan Islam upon all the peoples and lands that it occupies. Ladies and gentlemen, the most perfect example of the fundamentalist Muhammadan state was that of the Taliban in Afghanistan, a nation of mind-boggling ignorance of depraved injustice and inhumanity. Human intellect and achievements can only excel in the sunshine of freedoms of thought, religion, politics, literature, art and expression, which Muhammadan Islam abhors, avoids and detests.